I recorded an hour and a half video of making, not this beat, but a different beat. And it just didn't record my microphone because I didn't enable it. Awesome. So I recorded this video. Um, now just realizing this microphone wasn't even being used. It's the microphone, it's the Mac speaker or Mac uh, microphone. Sounds fine though, but I just want you guys to know that I, I, I thought that microphone was working. I wasn't just pretending to speak into it. Anyway, here's a video of me breaking down a uh, alternate rock beat. Hey fellas. Um, sorry, this is not the best setup. Uh, I'm moving, so half my shit's gone. So I'm just gonna use a MacBook web webcam and I'm just gonna break down this beat. This is what the beat sounds like. It's ba it's an alternate rock beat. I really love the way the guitar sounds, so I figured I'd do a tutorial on it. Uh, so yeah, here we go. It sounds like this. We're gonna go step by step down the list. I don't know why my uh, my CPU usage is getting a little hot. First up, uh, let me take all the mastering stuff off just so we know exactly what stuff sounds like without uh, master shit. Uh, I have the guitars basically set into groups. So I have a group for the chorus guitars and a group for the verse guitars, I believe. Yes, we do. So I, I started with the chorus, so we'll just start with the chorus. Um, here are the guitars. There's a left and a right. Super weak sounding guitars, right? And what those are, I believe, yeah, they're just they're just Amplitude 5. Um, I think I, I made my own patch. It's just this amp, and I uh, I basically doubled the cabinets and panned them to the same side because we're doing left and right. If you pan it left and right, and then you pan the actual track left, then you wouldn't hear the right one, right? So. Um, yep, just that, and then I have a bit of EQ, um, looks like I just took down around, god I can't read that, 4.8, 4.8 kilohertz, and a bit around 100 hertz, something like that, so I cut some lows, cut some uh, like high mids, and I have a, a two-way style compressor on it, just... Not barely touching, but but touching. Um, and I believe it's the exact same for this track, yeah. Uh, I might have just uh, switched the cabs or something just to make it sound a little bit different on this side. And then I threw a Fetish on, which is a free compressor. It's by Analog Obsession. It's a FET style compressor. It's really, really good. Um, I was doing some parallel compression, looks like. 50% uh, mixed, quite slammed. Um, so there you go and I have some EQ. So without the FET style compressor, it sounds like this. Right? So it just adds a little boost. And without the EQ, it sounds like this. Right? So I cut some lows, cleaned it up really. And that is the same on the other track, so they both sound like this. And so that's weak, right? So I'm gonna throw another track on. This is just one track of like a wide patch. That is just guitar rig. Um, I think it's the wide and crunchy preset. One of my favorites. Uh, I don't know how to check because it's not gonna tell me, but I'm pretty sure it's the wide and crunchy. Oh, it's basic ram fire apparently. Who would have thought? There we go. A little bit of EQ. Um, a lot of it EQ apparently cut around what five almost 5k 3k um, and uh, 200k or 200 Hertz just to clean up all the lows and so together that sounds like this I'll take these off which is good but you add a compressor on there and same sort of thing as a FET style EQ it's just the glue compressor um, which I think is like a VCA. I'm not, I'm not actually sure what style compressor this is, but... Um... Oh, it's Cytomic. I didn't even realize. Huh. Cool. Um, parallel as well. It's on 30% dry. Or I guess it's 30% wet. Um, somewhat slammed. I don't know. It's really going. It's really... It's, it's taken out about 10 dB. And then I make up about 16. So it's a little bit louder 
which is not something you should always do. Um, you should always try and match the gain, but shut up. Uh, you're not my dad. And then attack, really short attack, really long release. Cool. Add some EQ. This EQ, I mainly think is for the vocals, just so it doesn't compete with vocals. Um, I also just like the sound of scooped guitars. So, with and without. Cool. And so, yeah, that is, that is the entire chorus guitar track. On the first guitar track, um, these are all automation stuff, not really needed to get like the sounding mix. It's just this part right here, you can see. Um, see? Um, so there's a chorus and a, and a flanger on there just to add something cool in the intro. But uh, to the main part, uh, we've got just an amplitude preset. It is just this. It's a Chris Rice preset, actually. I use these a lot. Search this guy up. He's got good presets. Sorry, I'm only move this so you can actually see. And then I, I believe I just, yeah, I just switched it to modern. Oh, uh, yeah, raw from modern. Yeah, it's like less, less powerful. And it is the same thing on this. I think it's the exact same preset. Yes. I don't actually remember. I think it was the same preset. Yeah, same preset. Um, switch the switch to raw, so it's more of a muting thing. It's not very overpowered. For the pre-chorus, uh, this isn't the like pre-chorus guitar. It's like a, a guitar on top of the pre-chorus guitar. That is just a random patch I made. It's barely a patch. It's not really. A, I just switched the amp to. Uh, I think it's. Uh, What's it called? It's like the Silver 800 or something. There it is. Brit Silver, yeah. I just switched to Brit Silver and then messed around with some knobs. I didn't even think I touched the cab. I might have moved the the microphones on the cab just so I didn't, it didn't like if you put an SM58 reel up close in the middle, it'll be really sharp. And then I wanted to widen it, so I threw Haas effect on. And then this is EQ, very crazy EQ. Just to tighten stuff up, and then again the fetish um, compressor, and it's in parallel. And then on the actual guitar group, we have a compressor just to glue everything down. Two compressors to glue everything down, uh, both set in parallel. You really forget how good the compressors in Ableton are. I love them. I actually had no idea this was Cytomic. I guess this is like a a mock-up of Cytomic the, the glue, which is a really good glue compressor. I think that's a VCA. I'm pretty sure. And then I have some EQ just to cut some lows. And then I automated a flanger in the chorus, but not really needed. Uh, I have a, a Moog, I believe, Arturia Moog, like the Mini V3. That's just for some back end stuff, like. Sounds real digital. Uh, now I froze and flattened this, so I don't actually remember what was on the effects. Um, it probably was just the bass patch. Any synth will do. Just like, if I play this with the guitars, you can see how it, uh, it, it kind of builds a, a structure for it. See? Sometimes you barely even hear it when it's in the mix. And then another synth, I don't think this was a mini. It says it was, I honestly think it was Serum. Nope, it was mini, it was definitely mini. Just, uh, it's almost like some atmosphere. Just something for your ears to listen to while you're listening to it. <laughs> what, a, what a stupid thing I just said. Um, it's just like some support. The drums, uh, I always use Superior Drummer. The pop punk preset, Easy X pop punk. Click the John Feldman pop punk stuff. It's, it's incredible. Um, and then I threw some Shep's particle, parallel particles on. This is basically like drums that knock, um, but it's, just ships. It's really the same thing. I honestly think drums that knock is better. And that's an EQ because I wanted a little bit more low. I never normally boost EQ um, unless it's like a vocal in the highs. I, I don't I don't but boost EQ that much, but I, I had to here. See, without parallel particles in the EQ, it's kind of weak. 
So I'll play it and then I'll add the, uh, the Sheps and the EQ. There we go. And then we got a synth with, which normally is Serum. And it is a Serum with Kaleidoscope and MSED, which is like a mid-side um, gain, basically. It just makes stuff sound wide. And this synth line sounds awful, but in the mix it sounds fine. So all together so far, we've got this. Now, the only thing left we have um, for the chorus anyway is the bass patch, which I would normally record a real bass, but my bass is in my uh, my new house. So I had to use Triton. So I used a Korg Triton Extreme. It's actually, it's one of my favorite bass sounds um, for a VST anyway. It's just, uh, you click bass and then it's it's called new P bass. It's a, it's a nice sound. I threw in like a, a cabinet, Ableton stock cabinet shit. Um, threw it in mono because it was pretty wide. And you know what? I'm doing some mid-side EQ, but there's no reason to because it's in mono. I don't know why it's like that, to be honest. Um, so there we go. Um, oh, that's why. It's it's like half in mono because it's, it's dry. It's not totally wet. If it was totally wet, it'd be all in mono. Right? Idiot, idiot boy. Um, so I cut some lows out of it because it was super, super muddy which you won't really be able to hear because all these EQs are on. And then uh, I cut some some lows out of the sides because I don't want the sides to be super, super muddy. And then I did a scoop around here. You, I mean, I could have done this with one EQ to be fair, but uh, I like seeing kind of the stages of EQ. It also, I just, I, I just like wasting space apparently. Cool, that's the bass. So without any of this EQ or the cabinet, it would sound like this. It's just a little sharp for my ears, so I, I scoop. That's what that scoop is. Um, without the scoop, it would sound like this. See what I mean? Cool. Uh, and then atmosphere. Uh, this was actually pretty cool. This is a serum patch I made with a Spitfire Labs like London atmosphere. I think it's the birds chirping. So I, I, I basically, what I did is I made an instrument, I created a group, and I threw a, the, another instrument in that group. So when I played anything, it played both instruments at the same time. So that sounds like this. It's just like something for, it's like some backup. You know, it's like backing. It fills up the mix a little bit. It's always useful to add stuff like this because the mix will feel a little empty without it. And then that is literally everything. We got some sticks right here. Um, just a stick sample. <laughs> cool. Uh, and then I have, I guess, another synth atmosphere right here. It's not really that atmospheric, but it it's used to fill up a mix, so. That's just Serum, Kaleidoscope, which is a reverb, M said, which I told you about earlier. Um, and then automating a filtered swirl. Swirl, sweep. Uh, some chorus, crystalline, which is some more reverb, and Valhalla Room, which is some more reverb, because I really wanted to drown it out. Otherwise, it sounds pretty boring. It sounds like this. Which is not good. Much nicer this way. All right, and uh, I have some, I don't know, let's see. Yeah, I just use a bit of my reverb send, which is Valhalla Room. Oh, it's Valhalla Plate. Okay, cool. Valhalla Plate. Um, and then I don't believe I use my SSL comp. This is just my uh, SSL style compression. This is a free compressor, by the way. It's pretty good. It's uh, Buster SE by Analog Obsession. So, yeah. Super clean mix. I think vocals could be laid on this real nicely um, and without a lot of issue because of those guitar scoops. Yeah, that is a breakdown. I hope you learned something. Um, parallel compression, really useful. Uh, anyway.
I'm going to go uh, make more beats. Bye.